What is happening, people? Hey, guys, we back at Heiko Lake today. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to do a little crappy fishing. Brought my cooler today. Hey, we're going to try to put uh, 20 nice crappy in those cooler. And, uh, you know, this time of year, the water's really hot. And uh, they don't survive too well in the live well. And uh, so we're going to just put those fish right on ice. But before we start fishing, let's talk about running your side scan. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put around here today and I'm gonna find some structure on the bottom and uh, we're gonna locate it and we're gonna catch fish on it. And uh, I've had some comments on the channel and um, about frustrations and finding fish on side scan. Hey, and I'm gonna tell you, all of us have frustrations when we first get our electronics. And I encourage anyone, if you've got new electronics, go to the lake and spend some time. I remember one particular day last fall, I spent five or six hours at the lake just riding around looking at side scan trying to find structure. So you have to spend some time in order to get familiar with that structure. Now hey guys, I appreciate all the support we've been getting for this channel. Hey, I'm, we're getting close to those 10,000 subscribers that I initially was hoping to get when we started this channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, subscribe to the channel, we appreciate it. What everybody's been doing, share this channel with folks and uh, click the notification bell. Uh, please comment. I like to see your comments. And one other thing about the comments I'll say, and we're going to start looking around, is, um, you know, I still work a 40-week hour job. I try to get out fish, have my honey-do list to do, uh, you know, doing the family thing. And so sometimes it's a little late, about once a week I'm getting around to answering uh, some questions on the comments on the YouTube. So um, with all that going on, especially during the summertime, it's busy. Sometimes it's hard for me to get back to you when you make comments, but I will get back to you. Uh, so anyway, let's put around here. I'm going to crank the fire the boat up and I've got my GoPro here and we're going to look at the screen. And I wanted to do this early in the morning before so much glare got on these electronics. It's really hard to see them after the glare uh, is on them. I'm going to find some structure. I'm going to point it out. And I hope that relates back to you uh, and what to look at. Word to the wise, if in doubt, mark it. Come back and look at it on down, down scan or either look at it with your live scope. Before we start, let's set this up. So we're going to take a look here at the screen. So in here on the screen, I'm going to show you. So in here on the screen, I'm going to show you. I'm going to set my frequency right here, 455. I can change it and I can put it on 1220. But what that does, I ran this side screen on, on both. The 1220 is great if I had a bigger screen. Uh, because it just collects so much more data to put on the screen and these nine inch screens uh, That's a lot of data to put on such a small screen. So I personally that's just my opinion. I like that 455 better I can see uh, Second thing I normally run run about a hundred and a hundred feet or so on the side you can see a hundred feet You can see we in 14 feet of water <clears throat> and I can extend that out to about 150, but you notice how dark it gets on the side. You really don't get any detail on the side. And once in a while, if I'm looking for fish, I will put it on the 150, but most of the time I leave it on about 100 feet. So let's fire the boat up. And we're gonna go, we're gonna cruise around at about two to three miles per hour. Let's see what we can locate. Now we are actually out on a point, a uh, fairly shallow point drops off into the creek channel back to my left. And, uh, you know, right here immediately, here is, uh, see these? Those are probably trees. Let me blow that up. That is probably, see the shadow line on it? So, boom. So let's mark that. Mark that one, boom, back. Let's mark that one. And so we got two marks right there. All right, we back out to about 100 feet. And I'm just kind of cruising across 
I'm kind of cruising across this point, kind of shallow. I go up about eight feet. I'm looking out 100 feet, so it's probably looking out in about 15 feet of water, 15, 20. I'll go across the point, I'll turn around, and I will come back and see here we have uh, something else, uh, some type of structure coming up here. Uh, we, will, we will mark that there. We'll mark it, we'll come back, go back, it's continuing on. Uh, if I look out here to the side, see out here where it's really dark? I don't know if you can see that. That looks like a lot of stumps out here. I've got it shifted to the side. See all those stumps? And I'm going to just put a mark right in the middle of it. Now see how I shifted this to the side? So I can look at that. Here's something else. And uh, right here, this is sticking up off the bottom. Now you can take this. See how I shifted that right there up off the bottom? And we want to mark that right there too. All right, so we're in the 20 feet of water. We're gonna turn around. I came across that, uh, roughly got shallow eight feet. That was a top, top of the point came off, rolled into, probably over here in the creek channel now. So I'm going to turn around. Now you see this place, this right here? See this? That is probably shad. But see the ones right here? See the shadow mark? A shadow mark. I'm going to go back across this point. We're gonna go out about 50 or 60 yards because this is a main lake point. Main lake point's a really good place, especially in the summer for crappy to uh, stage up on, especially if it has some structure. And I'm assuming I've saw about three brush piles out here. Someone has stacked this point up pretty well. Do you see coming in here in the screen? Uh, that right there is a school of shad. You can see over here, these little spots here, uh, where the point comes off. That's the end of the point right there. See that little shade? You can see this big structure mark right here. Uh, let's mark that. Boom. Marked. Back. Back again. I'm gonna shift this. Uh, we can see out here. See this stump here? I'm going to zoom in. That right there is a, probably a stump that is on the bottom. And we're in 17 feet of water. Still out of way. The creek channel is to my left. Makes a big dog leg in here. So in a matter, so in a matter of uh, what, ten minutes, we run this one point, and we marked at least uh, four or five spots. Uh, that we can potentially come back and fish. Not all of those spots will hold fish. Some of them were shallower, some of them were deeper, which makes that good. And so, as a rule of thumb, when you're learning, uh, something may help you, uh, and that I did. So when I would find structure and I would verify that, uh, maybe I saw it on 2D sonar, maybe I saw it on live scope, maybe I saw it, um, you know, on down scan, and I knew where it was sometimes to practice. I would mark it, put it on side scan and ride by it just to see what it looked like. That's called practicing. And that way I can relate to what it looks like on the screen to what it looks like on shore. Same way with a blowdown. I would ride by off the end of blowdowns and look at it on live screen so I could get a visual idea of what it actually looked like on the screen. 
Same thing if you're practicing casting a bait caster in the in the backyard. You know, you're practicing with your electronics of how it actually look looks. And we and if you get frustrated, hey, we all get frustrated with our electronics sometimes. Just keep practicing, keep playing around with your uh, with your settings. Once you find a setting that meets your needs, stay with that setting. Boom! We gotta measure that fish. That is a good fish. Thirteen and a half inches. Boom! Good crappy right there. Boom! And hit a minnow. So we're gonna round up the lake and uh, see if we can find another spot. And uh, like I said, while the sun is down low, I want to look around and find some of these spots so you can, it's not so much glare on these electronics. So be back with you in a minute. So I've came in, I've, I've been riding around for a little while. I've been riding around for a little while looking for, um, you know, some brush. I came across this little point on the main channel that actually goes back in the cove. And uh, I see that there's an underwater tree or some sort of anomaly there on the bottom. It may be even two trees, not quite sure. Anyway, I'm going to ease by it and uh, let you kind of see what that looks like on side scan. Now, as a rule of thumb, uh, I think I'm sitting in about 10, right back there, it's about 12 feet of water. As I get shallower, um, I will scan, my scan will be narrow. I may run down to about 60 feet. Now that's me personally, because the transducer, that black streak on each side, is shooting straight down the depth of water and then out the contour of the bottom. So if that uh, beam is uh, shorter on both sides, I've got a wider field of view uh, than say if I was running in 25 feet of water and running, you know, 100 feet scan. That's just me as a rule of thumb, and that gives me. Uh, a better detail. Now still I'm on 455 uh, looking out. Uh, me personally that looks better on my screen. Everyone has a personal preference. Now many times I have my dark shades on. It's fairly sunny today and uh, many times I have to put my glasses on uh, if you need readers to actually see more detail. A lot of times that helps me. Let's ride by this little point. Got my GoPro and I'm going to kind of ride by two miles per hour and let you see kind of what it looks like. That, that'll tell you kind of how tall it is. Okay, so we come in, coming on by. So it should be on this side over here. I'm going to kind of knock it in neutral. Alright, you see it coming in line right here. See this shadow line this is throwing? So this is uh, some type, it looks like two trees. Coming off, here's your point. See your point right here? There's another pile of brush right here. Here's your trees. Let me move this over. There's your trees there. See how it throws? So that tells me they up off the bottom. Now I look right out from it right here. Here is another tree. And boom, look at that. That's a big brush pile right there. Sorry about that. See that big brush pile right there? I can blow that up. Now see this shadow line right here? And that tells me, that shadow line tells me that that brush pile is probably four or five feet off the bottom. Now let's mark that. I'm gonna put my finger on it, mark it, boom, right there, mark. And I like that brush pile right there. Now, all right, one other thing I'm gonna point out, see this, uh, see this ball right here? 
I'm gonna blow that up. Boom. That is a school of shad. Now you can look over here to this one. See that? See that shadow line that's throwing? You know that's something brush on the bottom. Uh, just saying. So anyway, we've uh, you, you saw where that tree it wasn't laying all the way on the bottom. If a blowdown is laying on the bottom, it won't create a shadow line. So that one we just come across is up off the bottom. So you can see that shadow line that's actually under it. And boom, we saw another brush pile there. And actually before I started talking to the camera, I had marked a couple of stumps about two feet tall off the bottom. So you've come to the lake, you want to catch some fish. And you know, some days the fishing just, man, they just not bite. So you know, I got that fishing and hunting app, and it shows me the peak of the movement period, the lull of the movement period, all during the day. And uh, I'm gonna try to pull that up so you can actually see it. And it also gives me an overall activity rate for the day. Now I'm gonna show you, here's my phone right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise this up, and you can see the overall activity rate for the day is 76 percent so i'm assuming the fishing is going to be pretty good now you can see the red line is where we are right now that peak right there is peak movement period you move down it is about 12 o'clock so we're going to be coming up on that peak when i'm fishing at the lake i make sure that i make sure that i try to fish through that peak because most of the time i catch the fish will feed now I'm going to back this up and to make my point. I'm going to back it up to Tuesday this past week. I know it's difficult to see, but you see, this is Tuesday. This is Tuesday this past week. Now you see how low the activity rate is poor. And it comes across here on the very bottom. Boom. Comes across here on the very bottom right here. High activity rate, if I'm fishing, I'm going to be sure I'm going to fish through that high. See this lull in here? And when you get those lulls like that, man, I don't fish so much. Man, you just don't catch no fish. Unless something odd is going on, like a big front's moving in and fish are just in a feeding mode. So, what I do if I'm fishing, and not every weekend that I get to fish, the you know, you're going to have a high activity rate like it is today. So, if I'm fishing... And I get in one of them lulls, and I mean fish just shut down. Hey, I'll crank the boat up, run three or four miles per hour, put side scan on about 100 to 125 feet, and man, I'll just I'll just cruise. And I'm marking brush. Boom, boom, boom. Every time I find something. And you will be surprised if you do that. And that lull will last anywhere from an hour to maybe two and a half hours. In that period of time of riding around, you're learning something about your lake. Especially if it's a new lake, you're marking spots. And I guarantee you, if you do that, you will find more places to fish. The more places, the more structure that you mark on your home lake, as well as any other lake, gives you an advantage when you go back to fish. There may be brush piles that people fish on a regular basis that don't hold a lot of fish just because they get fished out, and you have another place to go to. I can come here at Heiko Lake and it don't matter how many places that people are sitting on fishing, I can go to a different place, go blast right on by and boom, and I'm at the next place and I'm fishing. Same thing goes with boat docks. People fish a lot of docks here, they, some of the better ones, they keep the fish off, fished off, and uh, especially if you come you know, through the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they're going to they gonna hammer those boat docks. you got to find places that hold fish that people aren't fishing quite as much and you'll be a better fisherman, case in point. So anyway, I hope that this video helps you with the side scan and finding fish. Uh, that's just some of the points that I do uh, that help me. Just because I come to the lake and the fish aren't biting that well, I'm gonna learn something while I'm here at the lake. I'm gonna use my electronics and find a new place to fish. Uh, you know, I think in one of the videos about two weeks ago, I went all the way to the lower end and I rode around and I just looked for fish. I fished some, um, you know, fished some boat docks there, trying to find some new places to fish. Hey guys, we appreciate all the support we've been getting for this channel. 
We appreciate you watching. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Share this channel with someone that you know that likes to, uh, hunting and fishing shows. We appreciate it. Hit the notification bell. Click that like button. Hey, and don't forget to comment. I like to see your comments. Uh, good or bad. Hey, I get some bad comments sometimes. But anyway, hey, it's all good. And uh, anyway, we appreciate all the support we've been getting, as I said. Hey, guys, you remember, it's a wildlife, and I'll see you on the water.